said, I have to look at what they're going to start and then determine who I'm going to play. Half control by the Boilermakers. Ed Hightower, Ted Hillary, Tom Rucker, the officials tonight. Brett McQuay, Alan Eldridge with an alley-oop for McQuay. Are we ever underway? Greg McWay right now leads the conference in field goal percentage, but hasn't had many attempts. In fact, the last game he was one for four. They were blown out by that great backcourt of Ohio State. Red and pin really put the hurt on Purdue, as Digger talked about earlier. 80-69 to complete a Buckeye sweep. Michael Lewis playing awfully well right now in the backcourt for Indiana. Washington whips it inside to Guyton. A.J. Guyton backs out. Now leans in past Cornell with a rebound off Wrecker with a foul. Eldridge pulling Wrecker out of bounds. Hey, Dave, yesterday at practice, A.J. Guyton didn't miss a shot. He must have knocked down 15 in a row. I was talking to Bob Hamill, who writes down here. We're sitting next to each other. He couldn't miss it, didn't miss a shot. There's the diagonal pass, the little screen. They throw it up on top, and they get the layup. Eldridge, the first Boilermaker foul. A.J. Guyton, 21 points at Mackey Arena. He has really been playing well lately. Wrecker and Guyton had 45, as Digger said, but the guys that really hurt Purdue were Gladness and Washington. Wrecker inside of Eldridge to tie it in two. Nice move by Wrecker, showing that versatility he possesses. He's got to learn to be tougher and play on a defensive end with more consistency. Jerron Cornell, Boilermaker scoring leader, 15 points per game. He can shoot the three. Okay, Cunningham, and he steps inside of Guyton, hits a two. I'll tell you, Cunningham has really stepped up. You mentioned it earlier, averaging better than 16 points a game in his last four games where he's got four starting opportunities. Cunningham outstanding for Oregon State as a freshman. Almost won Pac-10 Fresh of the Year honors. Inside feed, Wrecker finds Lynn Washington. Good two-man play, Washington scores, but that's no-no defense. That's not typical Purdue defense. Off-balance miss, Cornell forced that one up off the back iron to Wrecker. Indiana runs with a no-look feed to Guyton. He didn't miss. pull-up three. He didn't miss yesterday, baby. He was on fire. They might have to call the fire to put out the fire. Burning those nets down tonight, Dave. This guy, he's got that beautiful stroke. 44% three-pointers, Dick, for A.J. Guyton over his last seven games. A lot inside for Cardinal. Nice execution. Good look inside. Cardinal holds position well. Releases. He's one of my old Rambo men, Dave. Really plays hard. He's been a little up and down this year. William Gladness threads that one past Cardinal. Washington missed it, but he tapped it back over to Gladness. And McQuay got a piece. Gladness lost his footing after coming up with a loose ball and it's stripped by Alan Eldridge. On the fast break, McQuay second slam. I'll tell you, that's why you lead the league in field goal percentage. That's high percentage, baby. Get out of the break, get the 45 degree angle. Good look by Eldridge. Guyton, another three pointer. I'll tell you, Dave, he is continuing what he did here yesterday. He put flat on a shooting show and you see it there. He's got that rainbow jumper. He'll that big Three to beat Penn State in overtime. Purdue again attacking inside with Cardinal. Two layups for Cardinal, two slams for McQuay, and it's 10-10. And hey, we're seeing Katie versus Knight. That usually means defense. Today getting all kinds of open shots. Carson Cunningham in the matchup with Michael Lewis. Call for the foul, second against the Boilers. Here's a look at AJ. Look at him squaring his body. I mean, look at a great look. Squares his shoulders well, gets the good arc, and it's stroke. Nothing but nylon. And jumping out of his seat, a big Indiana fan watching at home. Ten years of age, Kyle Pullum. Hey, Kyle, I know Dave and I sent you our best babies from Central Elementary School in Sullivan, Indiana. And he can tell you about every Hoosier player, Dave. Well, he would be a Michael Lewis fan, probably. Lewis hitting the first free throw, playing the best ball he's played this year, maybe the best stretch he's had as a Hoosier over the last six games. I think he should shoot the ball more. I was watching his stroke yesterday. was a big-time scorer in high school, but he's passing well, running their offense exceptionally well lately. Bobby Knight had some kind comments. Earlier this year, he was kind of down on Michael. Mike Robinson checking in for the Boilermakers, who have hit five of their first shots from the field, almost all 
have been inside. Also in Cameron Stevens, the sophomore from Fort Wayne. Stevens will give himself rebound and they got some scoring out of Robinson. Robinson attacks another lay in for Purdue. That's what they want out of him. They want point production out of Michael Robinson. He came in as an offensively skilled player out of high school out of Peoria, Illinois. Lewis rejection. Stevens off to Robinson, off to the races. Cunningham. They're four on two. It's Stevens. Hello. I mean, that's not Indiana basketball. He's going to get a T.O., baby. He can't be happy with that. No defensive transition. That's not Indiana basketball. Big change from the first meeting. This will be Greg McQuay called over the back of William Gladness. In the first meeting, Indiana raced to the early lead, 21-8. to eight. Purdue really never recovered in an 11-point loss. January 16th, 87-76. to 76. They lead 14-11 to 11 here. 15-51 to go from Assembly Hall, where Purdue has been strong inside. Yeah, he would have wished to see that kind of defense. Not much defense at all so far. Purdue 7 of 8, and they've hit their last five. As Washington drives, got a knock out of his hand. Willemakers fought cleanly, but it's going to be a Gary McQuay foul. Gary, the brother of Greg, who's just checked in. Well, they run a little curl move, get Washington in the lane. There's a little pump fake to free himself. Goes down the lane. They say he got him on the hand. Looked like all ball. Washington and Gladness between them in the first matchup at 25 points and 20 rebounds. But as you stated earlier, his minutes have really disappeared. Since that game, he's played, as you mentioned, a total of 18 minutes. Just a 55% free throw shooter. Also uncharacteristic of both teams. Not good at the line this year. Both well below 70%. Well, that's normally some area where they really, really are way, way higher. Purdue started off so well this year. They jumped out 12-1, and one, but a little deceiving. Eight of those games were played right at Mackey Arena. And then the toughness of the Big Ten. That's the toughest conference from top to bottom this year. They try the alley-oop to Gary McQuay, and record read it pretty well, and Cunningham travels. Cunningham with the walk. You look at the backcourts now, both backcourts do not do a great job defensively. And this year, the league in the Big Ten, other than Eschmeyer dominating inside, has been a league dominated by guard play. And in red at Ohio State, certainly Calderwood, and playing brilliantly with Sean Mason for Wisconsin. Wrecker starts in on Eldridge, pulls up, misses, and is rebounded by Washington. He's trying to earn some PT. He wants more minutes. That's the way to get it. Wrecker for three. Wide open. Just a simple little down screen. A little vertical screen made that happen. Part of the Indiana passing game. Screen when you're away from the basketball. Fifth lead change already. We've had three times. I learned so much basketball today. Just sitting, talking to the general, watching an X and O. I mean, he's just unbelievable when he talks about the game. Ed Hightower assuring Coach Knight he did not see, indeed, uh, see the traveling violation, the second consecutive Purdue turnover. We got a big three here tonight. I'll tell you, they made sure they put three experienced Zebras on this game with certainly Hightower and Rucker and Hillary. Indiana by one. Number 15 coming in, trying to get above 500, though, in the hyper-competitive Big Ten, five and five coming in. Purdue four and five, eight. You never expect to see Purdue eight in conference play. A drive by Rucker. They say he turned it over. No foul. Offensive foul. The call. Rucker going to try to go to the goal now. Usually Purdue rotates over and takes the charge. Let's see right here. Yeah, they did a job right there. Rucker up in the air. That's a no-no for you young kids. You don't want to leave your feet. In that area, defensive man easily has just set up for a charge. Indiana finally called for his first foul. More than five minutes gone in the game. Eldridge, nice horizontal screen across the lane by Cardinal. Madness anticipated, almost got there in time for the steal. Shot clock down to ten. Mike Robinson has lost his starting job. Missed it off balance. Washington having a good start on the glass. That was a big time rebound by Washington. Record for three. That's part of the secondary phase in a running game. That's part of the secondary phase, Dave. The trailer. Record is the trailer. He has the ability to play inside, outside. You can invert him. Guyton called 
for the reach. Indiana now four for four beyond the arc. You're going to watch right now the trailer. Lewis knows the trailer's record coming from behind. That's the secondary phase in their transition game. There he is, knocking down the trifecta. That shot has really revolutionized college basketball. The making of the three. For the better? Oh, yeah, I really think it's for the better. I don't like the distance. I've said from time to time I'd like to see it be moved back to the international distance of 20 feet 6 inches. I think it's utilized just too often in the college game. And I don't blame the coaches for using it. Well, Purdue, not a good three-point shooting team, so they again try the low post, and Greg McQuay has six to lead the Boilermakers. Well, that junior college player is making an impact right here, getting inside. He was so effective earlier this year, and then he ran into a wall when he started competing in the Big Ten. That'll do it to anybody in the toughest in this league. Record trying another three-pointer. Stevens may have had a piece of it. This is the first three-point miss by Indiana. Well, the first time they were challenged on a three-point shot. Good perimeter three defense there. And he's one with another walk on McQuay. Instead, they get a three by Cardinal. I'll tell you, the Rambo guy knocks it down. Both clubs are really executing offensively, but the defense really has been subpar. Boilermakers regain a one-point lead. Guyton tries to get it back. He has three three-pointers. It's amazing. I'm sitting here in awe watching the way he's stroking the J, baby, because I watched him yesterday, and I was amazed. I did not remember him missing a shot yesterday in their workouts. I'm telling you, he was unbelievable. He had a couple of really cold stretches earlier in the season as Cardinal almost loses it. Now trapped. Double dribble. Double dribble. See that with one eye. I can see that from up here, and I'm further up with the referees. I can make that call up one. Gene Caney saw it too. He didn't argue a bit. Third for due turnover. You mentioned about Guy really struggling earlier. I was talking to John Cheney, who I firmly believe belongs in the Hall of Fame for what he's done. Has a chance to win his 600th game this year. But when they played against Indiana, they got beat at the basic buzzer by Guyton. He had missed nine threes in a row before he hit that one. Hit the one they had to have. Is that too short? That's too short. That's too short. Too short for him, Dave. He got about 10 feet. See, with him, I'm let him penetrate a little lip play D on him. Come along the square and shoot the foot. Guyton's confidence really seemed to soar when he hit uh, the two big three-pointers late at Penn State. About a week and a half ago, one to uh, force an overtime and one to win it. A double overtime for Indiana. Cardinal almost his second three-pointer, staying on it on the offensive glass for them. They're doing a lot more active right now than they were according to Gene against Ohio State, who really put the blitz on him, not once, but twice. Beat him at Schottenstein, 72-43. That hurt. Whew. That's a flat-out whipping. Oh, a scoring game for Purdue, better than a decade that night. Cardinal traveling. He thought he was being fouled by Kurt Haston, the redshirt freshman who's just come in. Turned it over. Timeout. 11-13 to go. First half. Guyton and Indiana shooting their way to a two-point lead. And what else about that club unique for most Indiana clubs? That was the last team where every player in their starting lineup started every game. 32 games, the same five, all 32. Where are those days ever gone? Record misfires after hitting a pair of earlier three-pointers. This is already, I believe, their 12th starting lineup tonight. Changes virtually game by game this year. Well, it's dictated by the other team. He doesn't have the personnel, he said, where I can just put a club out there and I got my five best players like I did in previous years. Back clock down to 10. Tony Mayfield. Good ball handler Mayfield. Speed up on top, step away. Down to five. They don't cover Cardinal. He can make you pay from three feet. He does it this time, and Rob Turner has the board. Turner has really been playing well for them. It's almost like an extra guard. Haston tied up. And Purdue will get it. When Turner's on the floor at 6'3 and a half, 6'4, he's really a guard, even though he has forward skills. There's the good no-look pass inside. Hastings hesitated. And there's all ball. Good call by Tom Rucker. 
Another block by Greg McQuay, the Purdue shot blocking leader, with only 16. Not a big shot blocking team. Well, you know, neither is. Psychologically, Indiana coming in here on a high, beating Wisconsin. Purdue coming in on a low, getting blown out of hole by Ohio State. McQuay, a high riser from 10. Eight points for Greg McQuay. Purdue back even at 21. Now, McQuay, a junior college player, has done a solid job early in this game, getting good post position inside. Look at right now. Looks like a little triangle in two. Let's see if they stay with the guards. Gladness. Nice pass to Haston and a foul. They went to a zone. Looked a little bit like they were matching up with the guards up on top. But that zone left a lot inside. When you're not a normal zone team, and Purdue is a predominantly man-to-man -man team, it's really very difficult to get your players to adjust to the normal slides that that zone has to be. Kirk Haston, redshirt freshman, Lovellville, Tennessee. A 69% free throw shooter going for the three-point play. He's had some big games for them off the bench. A kid that really sitting out helped him tremendously as he got a chance to develop a little. And Greg McQuay can get it right back for Purdue as he's fouled by Haston. The one thing lacking with this Indiana team this year and the reason that they're really in the middle of the pack at 5-5 five and five in the Big Ten, they really lack post presence. They don't have good post play on the interior. They rely so much on the perimeter, and if the perimeter breaks down for them, they really struggle. We talked about good games Haston has had as McQuay completes the three-point play. His best by far against a terrific shot blocker. And Bill Prisbilla, 24 points, 13 boards that night. They won lacking for the low post. Oh, no, he really played well. And see, he's more or less a kid that can step out to the foul line and knock down that jump shot. And really not a guy that's going to lock up and be so effective in the low blocks. Purdue goes to Mayfield to try and slow down Guyton. I don't know if that's possible tonight. I'll tell you one thing. When he's at the top of his game, he's as good as any guard in America. When he is playing A.J. Guyton basketball with confidence, Cornell all the way through the lane, and Haston holds him off. Wrecker, long pass ahead to Turner. Foul by Mayfield. That's just, that's just poor basketball. That's just poor defensive transition basketball. That is not Purdue basketball. That's not how they won three consecutive Big Ten titles in 94, 95, and 96. And he told us that today. He said, we are not playing good fundamental basketball. And here's an example. Turner sneaks out in transition, not only gets the layup, gets fouled, goes to the line for the conversion of the three-point style the old way. First three points for Turner, four-point lead for Indiana. Even in the years when it didn't win in 97 and 98, they were second in the Big Ten. Now they're sitting at four and six, and they have games coming up on the road in Illinois and on the road at the hottest team in America, who I would give today if I would give them my seeds at number one in the West, Michigan State. Michigan State at number four in the country in the latest to the ESPN coaches poll. Nine and one in the conference, 20 and four overall. Gladness hit with a foul, his first. And both coaches today, Gene Candy and Bobby Knight, were telling me how they're really so impressed with the athleticism of that Michigan State club. And Morris Peterson's the best six man in America. Leading score for the number four team in the country doesn't start. Think about that. Top shot, Cunningham. Cunningham came the way of Oregon State, came from the West, but always wanted to play in Indiana. He was an Indiana kid. When he got the chance at Purdue, he just jumped at it. Haston jumps, hits just inside the three-pointer. See, that's what I was talking about earlier, Dave. He really steps away. A 6'10 player, he's more or less like a wing player. Haston on the other end, throwing a few elbows, and he connected with Greg McQuay, his second person. Look at Bobby Knight, look at that. Hey, Bobby's doing a little dance for us. Look at Haston right here. Now, McQuay trying to get position. There he is now fighting. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about the foul. I don't think there's any doubt about the foul. Might have been able to call one earlier on a hook by McQuay. Well, the day the uh, Oscar nominees were announced, McQuay making his bid maybe a little bit. They drifts outside, and Greg McQuay outside now. 13 of Purdue's 28 points. What a big-time night. He wants to be a PT peer tonight. He's keeping him in the game here. But somebody better handle this guy. Guyton, two more. Nobody can handle him. It's an m and ever. It's a mismatch right now. There's nobody can handle Mr. Guyton. Traveling. Is he putting a show on tonight? It's the A.J. Gordon Show here in Bloomington, Indiana. And I love it. All the Hoosier fans are going bananas. And he's 
doing it all kinds of ways. Here he is now spinning, taking the ball up on a drive, shooting that medium range jump shot off the glass. Now he's going to show you a little shake and bake move, get into the lane, spin again, and there he is with a great rotation from out of Peoria Central High School, from out of Illinois, and oh, has he been a star tonight? 13 points, look at that, 3 for 3 from 3 point range. Look at the game summary, both clubs really shooting the rock. 72% by the Boilermakers, not enough to lead, they trail by 4 despite... Six of six by McQuay, who has uh, Guyton matched. He also has 13. Yeah, McQuay says, look, you give it all that 18 to Mr. Guyton. I'm six for six. Well, you know why? You're not leading on the board. To the winners go to score. Cardinal trademark play to the deck to come up with a steal. Eldridge over Jane Fiacons. Nice shot by Eldridge. Both clubs really focusing and concentrating on their execution offensively. There's a little zone right now. Cornell got a piece of the pass by Michael Lewis. They swing it over for a three-point try by Rob Turner. Gladness with the tip on the offensive glass. Nice play by Gladness to keep that alive. Good anticipation. What a courageous young man. Played with a bullet in the left side of his body. Came from Miss West Memphis, Arkansas. When they got shot down, he and his buddy on the way home after a basketball game. He said, I came from a tough, tough neighborhood. Record straight off, trying to bank a three. Again for Indiana as they tap an offensive rebound outside to restart the offense. And it's Wrecker rejected on the back door. Nice look inside. The good alert play by Purdue on the interior. Good solid interior defense. Three-pointer Cornell. That's what he can do from out of South Bend, Indiana. Played high school, led him to the state championship. Hit a big three. And that win could really help them get a postseason berth to the big fans. But it were 18 down. Came back and beat St. John's at Madison Square Garden. He hit the winner at the muzzle. Jerron Cornell, after hitting his first bucket, called for his first foul. Purdue with a three-pointer by Cornell a moment ago. His 58th of the year. They have hit six consecutive shots to regain a one-point lead. Dave, you know teams right now that are in the danger zone, middle of the pack in their conference becomes big and you look for those certain big wins indiana's got a win over utah who's as hot as anybody in the nation winning 13 in a row and if i'm going to cast the ballot for player of the year i would cast it for andre miller he's been multi-dimensional and super for rick majeris but they also have a win over temple on the side of purdue they got that win over st john's that could really help them in the rpi ratings Five hits the front end. Uh, for those of you experiencing audio problems, we apologize. We are working to get them fixed. Dane Fife has started nine times this freshman year. Former Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. Hits them both. His dad and his brother were Michigan Wolverine players. Fife is a kid that hit a big three against Kentucky to send that game in overtime. And Kentucky won it in overtime. Scott Padgett was brilliant in the OT. They've been struggling, lost two in a row, Kentucky. Yeah, that's happened. They have a great road streak in the SEC. And that Florida, they haven't picked it back up since. Lost to Florida and lost to Alabama. 11 lead changes in the first 14 minutes and change. This one has not been disappointing in the least. Indiana by one. Well, both clubs breaking down with any kind of ball movement, any kind of dribble penetration, defensively really breaking down. Not playing that great team help defense. Tom Rucker says the three-pointer by Cornell went over the top of the backboard, out of bounds. I think at an Indiana club, we saw Scott May and Kent Benson a little bit earlier. You think of Quinn Buckner. That was one of the best teams I've ever seen assembled in 76. Rob Turner missed the three. Shooting too quickly. Not enough patience, not enough moving the basketball. Indiana basketball, they usually pass it three, four, five times. Bump you off screens. Same thing with Purdue. It was so hot early, though. They hit five of their first six three quarters. They really fell in love with it a little bit. Purdue really uh, bit by the traveling club tonight. There's another one. This one called on Philadelphia. They don't lose too often here in the General's house. I can tell you that. The only yell they have here thus far this year, they were whipped on the glass big time by Tom Izzo's club. And what a job he has done in his short tenure as head coach of Michigan State. National Coach of the Year last year. 
Spider Ruff four in the country this year. Spider Ruff slowly this year recovered after that slow start. The team leaves has gotten better and better. Look out, another three by Guyton. Cannot miss. That basket is like the Atlantic Ocean right now. I mean, it is like the Atlantic Ocean. He can't miss. It would like to be taking Chris Fowler, give him the rock, stand him on the beach, and let him throw him in the ocean. He would not miss. No. Don't go too crazy. Cameron Stevens Who has I'm, four. I'm so shy. I'm so quiet. <laughs> I'm so introverted. Guyton, 16 first half points, 4-3. I'm not shocked after watching him yesterday in practice. This is just a repeat performance, only this time the lights are on. Turner all the way into a block by John Allison. Little used, but per minute, maybe the best shot blocker in the country. I'll tell you, they like him. They think his development is something special once he gets stronger physically. Uh-oh, here we go. Oh, What a record Gene Kenny's had in the Big Ten. He's been amazing. In the decade of the 90s, they have won more than anyone. Indiana has matched its largest lead of the game thanks to the steal by Rucker. 39-35 Hoosiers. Love the way he shoots the rainbow through. Guyton feeding Larry Richardson this time, and it's the Indiana six-point lead, their largest inside feed, the Cardinal foul by Lewis. This is a real dangerous time for Purdue. You're down six right now, and you got to really gut it up in the last three minutes. You don't want to go in in halftime with a big-time deficit after playing well early. See, now watch it. They're going to throw the ball inside. Got the ball in there kind of easy, and there's the contact. Richardson out of the Miami, Florida area. Hey, what about Miami? What a job Leonard Hamilton's done this season. They are definitely a top 20 team. I wish they would get some fan support. I think that's absolutely a disgrace that the fans don't come out in big numbers. Those kids deserve better, Johnny Hemsley, and those kids like Tim James. They get 3,000. They, they had one big crowd. And UConn, that, was right? UConn. that is a crime. You got a big building. They got an outstanding team. Come on. You can get an atmosphere like this. Wow. See, he never has the luxury, Leonard Hamilton, of having this kind of atmosphere to have a home court advantage. Nine for Cardinal. Three-pointer first miss on the arc by Guyton, who was four for four. Wow, we got a scoop. He missed one. He better play better on a defensive end. Bobby Knight has not been happy with his defense. Cunningham right now against Guyton. He's doing a good job screening and it's stepping away from the screen and getting open. Cameron Stevens pushed. Watch find out more about the century's greatest by logging on to ESPN.com. Follow Go Network, Go.com. That's really an interesting series. I've been lust loving listening to Dan Patrick do that. I see the one he did with Chris Everett was great. 245 and a half Indiana by four. Cunningham back in to guard Lewis. And a man defense got out of that zone. They're not a zone team. Their personality reflects their coach, and that's playing man-to-man -man defense. Washington travels. That time, Vic, they tried a bigger man, Mike Robinson, on guy. A five-inch height advantage. I was mentioning it next year to future. Bobby Knight's really excited about George Leach, a 6'10 and a half player who they got away from Maryland, actually, from down in Charlotte, North Carolina. And they got another big kid, about 6'9, Newton, coming from Atlanta. And he thinks they can become impact players here right away on their front court. And they return all these other guys, basically. With the exception of Gladness. Turner and uh, Gladys, the only team of Indiana seniors. They turned it over for the third time. That's all. Last time down the floor, McCray finally misses. He missed his easiest shot. He had like a three-footer. Couldn't believe he was that wide open. He said, hey, I'm supposed to be a star. I'm not supposed to get open like this. His brother's getting a lot of playing time. Played a lot more last year. And a lot more Greg Vingari this year. Eldridge off on a three. Rebound Robinson pushed off. 
no that doubt about it. Tom Rucker. No doubt about it. Look at him smiling. Thought he could get away with one. Thought he could win himself an SP. Look at Gene Kenny. He's smiling. He said, you can't get away with that, Michael. Watch this. Watch Michael right now. Hold it. Freeze it right here. Now watch this here. He's going to push right on the inside. We're going to watch a little push. Oh, no, no, it was the other guy. Oh, that was a push on Rutger. That's a turnover with the Telestrator. <laughs> Look at Gene Cady. So you're two for three. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take two for three, though. Rutger hits the front end. That's a silly foul, too. You put him on the line. The clock doesn't move. You're down five, going to six. Gene Cady trying to get the year. Tell Hillary, he says, hey, there's a great restaurant in town. You're called Puccini. Do you want to join me tonight? And Hillary saying, are you serious? Look at him staring back. Oh, what a tee, Gino. Yeah. One of two to keep it Indiana by five. We hit the two-minute mark in the first half of Assembly Hall. The back and forth half. 11 lead changes. That screen right there by Cardinal is wide open after the screen. And this follows him out to the top of the key. Nice back back cut on Robinson on the reverse. Mike Robinson has four off the bench. Normally through his career, a better big game player. The later he gets in the season, the better his numbers. A backdoor cut. You normally don't see those kind of cuts against Indiana. Offensive foul here on record. I mean, with simple backdoor cut, nobody rotates over. I mean, we're going to watch the little backdoor cut right here. Right here. Freeze See, right here. See, record taking a gamble, and now he goes backdoor and no help. No help. I mean, it's unbelievable. That's not Indiana basketball. I mean, you got to see ball, you man, theory. Bobby Knight really started that with Al LaValvo, a name that a lot of people don't know. A father of defense from out of New Jersey years ago. A man I respect so much. A great teacher of the game. Worked with Bobby at West Point as an assistant coach. Right now, his 28th year at Indiana. All-time winnings, Big Ten coach. He's produced shooting 68%, Dick. And this is for a tie, and Cunningham comes up short on a three. I and mean, shooting like that, and you're down three, tells me you're not playing on the defensive end. There has been no defense for A.J. Guyton tonight. Record right behind him. Now they try and get some inside action going. Richardson travels. And they are moving quickly to battle Michigan State, I believe, for a number one seed in the West because Stanford slipped big time. That was a bad loss against Connecticut without Richard Hamilton losing at Naples Pavilion. Skip pass and a nice leaping catch by Alan Eldridge. 45 seconds, 20 on the Purdue shot clock as Cardinal drives on Gladys. Back all alone for a three as Cunningham to tie it at 42. I can't believe the wide open shots against Indiana. For years, when you thought of Indiana, the first thing that you would think of, other than the general Robert Montgomery Knight, what was synonymous with Indiana was team defense. And there is absolutely no concept here today of the defense that they are taught by the general. Little penetration, he steps back, where's his man? I mean, I can shoot that wide open trifecta. Are you kidding me? He's wide open. It's like playing a game of horse against nobody guarding. Carson Cunningham, just his sixth three-pointer of the year. And now they've decided it was a two. So, keep it Indiana by one, 42-41. So difficult for Mar Angle sitting up here, up higher. But he stepped in that line according to the Zebras, and they're closer than we are. If you take a look at the big picture here, Bloomington would have won so many games during the General's tenure. And those national titles. 76, 81, and 87. 92 went to the final four. Had a great chance in 93 with the Calvert Cheney game, but Alan Henderson got hurt. Went to the final eight. Purdue wanted to walk on Luke Jimenez. Now his long three quarter good with six seconds. I ask you, Dave, anybody guarding him? There was nobody guarding him. Eldridge with the runner almost got it. The end of the wow. first half. What a shooting display by both Purdue and Indiana. And it's 45-41. Turnovers. Linnell bounced down the baseline. McQuay now six of eight from the field. That's last by Jerron Cornell. And out of bounds to Indiana. Well, Indiana trying to sweep 
Purdue. They did it twice in the 90s, 91 and 93. Both those years, they won the Big Ten title. Hey, you speak about winning a Big Ten title. I mean, that achievement of going three consecutive years by Gene Cady is sensational. 94, 95, 96. Gladness call for steps. He knows a little bit about winning, and he told you and I today at the shoot-around how he is not happy with this club. He said, in 89, I got rid of five guys after the end of the year who didn't play Purdue kind of basketball in terms of hustle, scrap, and listen and do things the right way. He said, we may have wholesale changes this year. Things like that not making this uh, an enjoyable year so far for Gene Katie. He says the biggest lack on his roster right now, they are crying out for leadership. Yeah, no leadership. And it's one thing that he said they lack, as you mentioned. And you got to have leadership, especially in this league, where every game is a battle. I mean, think about the bottom three teams are Penn State, Illinois, and Michigan. Guyton off the glass, 18 points. He's combining good perimeter play. The medium range jump shot, taking the ball to the goal. What is he not doing? The kid is playing brilliantly. That's how Andre Miller and Jason Terry have been playing all year. Oilers have turned it over their first two trips, but they are running it through Cornell much more than they did in the first half. Only four shot attempts for Cornell in the first half. Cardinal inside foul by William Glenn. They've done a great job. If you have to look at one area where they've excelled defensively is to really minimize the touches of Jerron Cornell. That's their basic option, number one for Purdue, and they've taken that away from the Boilermakers. What they didn't take away, though, the first half was the inside play. When this game started, it was dunk, layup, dunk, layup, almost at will for the Boilermakers. Gene said he's got a great kick coming in next year. Three position player Kenny Lowe from out of Gary, Indiana. Gary produced so many great players. Probably the greatest, or one of the greatest, obviously, ever at Purdue by the name of Glenn Robinson. They've had so many great ones over the years. Rick Mount, what have he, what would have he done with this three-point line? Had an average 50 again. Wow. Keep care of this. Where has, the, where has the jump shooter gone? Guys like Calvin Murphy and Maravich and Mount. Everybody wants to be skywalkers, high rises, and shoot dunks. Well, then that makes this man a throwback, I guess. A.J. Guyton off the jump. He's floating, he's gliding, and he's stinging like a bee, baby. A little Muhammad Ali action right now. And wanted a walk on Cunningham. Cornell drives into a double team, missed it with the left hand. Guyton with the rebound. He has 20 points for the sixth time in their last eight games. That was an impossible shot by Cornell. You talk about a four shot, not the kind of shot you want on a leading scorer. Guyton, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. 22 points, 9 of 12, 4. Five beyond the earth. And what a continuation from yesterday. Yesterday he didn't miss. He must have went 15 in a row at one time. So, and, and I would be afraid that I left it all in the practice court. That's what I said to the general. I said, are you a little worried? He said, I'd rather the kid go home feeling confident. I mean, that hole right now is like the Atlantic Ocean. Some guys, it's like a little teacup. This is the largest Indiana lead yet. And mind you, ready for this? He was shut out against Syracuse when they lost. I mean, shut out. He took the play. He took a Nolan Ryan fastball and got shut out. Hard to imagine. Yeah. That he was blanked basically by Iowa. Hard no call for traveling. Ten Purdue turnovers. Most of them have been traveling. This can start to get away. Purdue needs a stop here and a score. They can't let this kid get the double figures right now. This crowd is ready to erupt. Gene Cady playing for a career advantage against Bob Knight. They're 19-19 head-to-head coming into this one. Guyton again finally misfires. And he didn't get the roll. Out of bounds to Purdue. Well, you know, as Sticker said on a free show about the guards having big days against Purdue, and here's another example today. When you look at this league, I mean, Wisconsin, all right, they lost to Illinois 53-51, lost a tough game here, but now they play tomorrow. It could become the first time in Wisconsin history that they win 20 games since 1941. I mean, that was a diaper dandy at that time. And they got great guard play with Mason and Calderwood. 
They really hurt Purdue. Oilers looking for their first field goal of the second half. Their only points for Brian Cardinal free throws. Eight point game. Shot clock under 10. They're nowhere close. Now Cunningham off balance. Got it. I'll tell you, he made a tough shot right there because Indiana really tightened up defensively. Eight for Carson Cunningham. Guyton down the baseline, throws it away to Eldridge. And a nice behind the back maneuver and traffic. Looks up, lane open foul. That was a big stop on the other end and a conversion, a big shot. The big shot of this game thus far for Purdue was that little jumper by Carson Cunningham. They needed it so badly. That could be a big call with uh, William Gladness picking up his third. I, I read some great quotes by Bob Slick Leonard. Played here in 52 to 54, won the national title in 53. He said this game was so big that Branch McCracken used to tell the players, the former coach, as he misses that free throw, if you beat Purdue, I'll give you an autographed basketball at the end of the year. His career slick. He was 6-0. What a guard he was. That was before your time. <laughs> slick Leonard's before your time. Uh, I, I think it's Slick Leonard in the ABA. That's what Slick up. Leonard means. You, you thought about him when he was coaching the world. Right. It's Slick, we're dating you, baby. Allen Eldridge, one of two. 51-46 in Bloomington. Gene Cady, since he's been the coach, has has more wins per year than anyone. They've averaged 12 wins a year in a Big Ten over his tenure as coach at Purdue. That's an amazing number. Jared Odell has checked in. Goes to Haston who hits a hook. Nice little post move presence right there by Haston on the inside. Strange as it sounds, Cady not considering an NCAA bid a certainty for this Boilermaker team. Greg McQuay with a miss. Haste in a rebound. Here comes Guy in the open court. The looker, Wrecker, sets up the open three by Lewis, and he can't get it down. They're playing Odell and Hasty together right now. Odell did the deck out of bounds. You know, Odell, Bobby Knight really apologized to the kid. It was publicized here. He said, I should have played him some minutes against Wisconsin because he flat out earned the playing time after his performance against Penn State. He was really calm today, talking about everything from horses with his buddy, Mr. Lucas, to you name it. He was talking about, in fact, I'll tell you one statement he made. We'll get to it after this foul. Committed by Odin. He said, you ready for this day? Ready. The best coach in the United States of America. Ready for it? He said, and has the best program that all of us are trying to emulate is my former West Point cadet point guard, Mike Krzyzewski. He said flat out today in front of people, he is the best coach in the United States for everything he does and for the way he has the direction of that program. That's a strong, strong statement. Lots of people would agree with that. Great tribute, though, to the former West Pointer and Indiana assistant, Coach K. Turn around in the lane by Mike Robinson. Not only a miss, but he commits the foul going after his miss. I thought he was going to be a big-time player here, Mike Robinson, a consistent player. You can give a little excuse his freshman year, getting acclimated and getting adjusted. By now, I thought he'd be able to give them a lot more point production. Look at the numbers now versus the first half, 64%, one for six, a little Brick City here in the second half. Well, you knew they'd probably come down to earth, and they have been crashing. That's why they're going to have to pick it up on a defensive end, as we see a turnover, and they did that right there. Gene Kenny, such a passionate guy, pours his heart out, want to send the best out to his wife. Pat is at home, not feeling a little bit under the weather. So is Bobby Knight. He's got a little bit of a flu. He told me today, I got the basketball flu. <laughs> Katie's saying uh, today he feels like if they can win one of this three-game stretch they have on the road, they go to uh, Illinois and then to Michigan State next. Sweep all their home games, win at least one in Chicago in the tournament. That would be their road to the NCAAs. He doesn't think a certainty yet. Haston with a defensive play. Purdue will go to Nova, and he says, what about over the back? Yeah, no foul over the back. Well, he does it with a smile. Jacket not off. The one thing that really bothers him, he said, as you see the contact, looked like an all ball there, but he wanted the over the back right there, is the fact that he felt at home they were embarrassed, and no one wants to get embarrassed on the home floor.
especially in front of a great crowd that they have at Mackey. That's a beautiful arena in terms of enthusiasm. We well, have the team to beat them at home this year. Ohio State Saturday, 80 to 69. Guyton, the extra pass inside for Houston. Too easy. Absolutely too easy. A little dribble penetration. They worked on that yesterday. Getting to the gap and see with a little dump down. And here comes the Bloomington. People are really ready to respond. A little penetration. They worked on that yesterday, Dave, in practice. They consistently working on penetration. Freeze it right here. See, once he gets in here, there's the help. He releases. He dumps it down, and they got a layup. There it is. There's the release. The little screen, the dump down, created by the penetration by Guyton. Alley-oop, Cameron Stevens has to go up twice and finally gets the points. After Indiana had opened up their largest lead of the game at 9, it's 55-48. Stevens starting to play better, sat out all last year, pop 48. Oh, air ball, mercy. Carson Cunningham the other way, pulls up, hits the three. I'll tell you, Cunningham gives him some offensive productivity. 16.5 a game in his last four games. Knight might be getting a little bit tired. He's done an unexpected pass. Bobby Knight's going to go to the bench, shooting the ball a little quick. Cunningham, some big shots here in the second half. Eldridge, that would have been another one, the three-pointer rebounded by Robinson. Cunningham driving wow. one hander. Wow, that's back in the days at number 14 with the Celtics. You don't remember him, one of my idols, Bob Cousy. I remember Bob Cousy. He's the uh, Celtics color announcer. Good law for You were like two years old at the time he played. Oh, he played? Oh, is he a player? What a bounce pass. What a great backdoor cut. We're seeing some outstanding offense tonight. We really are. Some great cuts without the ball. Some excellent shooting. People that like offense, you're getting it tonight. Look at Michael Lewis. There's a nice drop bounce pass record, making that good cut without the ball, the count. And then a little showtime. Luke Record. Record, first points of the half. He has 13 for the game. Stevens committed the foul. His second. Carson Cunningham's provided a spark for them. He really has on the perimeter. He's made some tough shots. His first 16 games as a boiler dick, one game in double figures. He started the last four, averaged 16 and a half, 13 and counting in this one. Well, he had a lot of injuries earlier in the year. He was really hampered by a number of injuries. They're going to one for three at the line to keep it. A four-point margin, Purdue coming back from nine down just about a minute ago. One thing about Purdue kids today, Gene Kenny cannot complain about their effort. They're certainly focused on playing hard. Cardinal spins and a mismatch with Rod Turner. Double clutches would have counted. And he is sick at himself that he didn't get the layup. I'll tell you one thing, if you can't get pumped up to play in this kind of environment or rivalry like this, there's something wrong with you. Cardinal trying to work on that baseline to utilize the power layup move where you square your body to the baseline. See, now he squares his body to try and get the good angle. Almost the principle of verticality where you come back into the defensive player. His dad, the trainer down in Illinois. Which is very fortunate for Brian because he has spent as much time probably as anybody in college basketball banging his body up on the floors of the big yeah, He's always scrapping and clawing. He's an all John Madden performer. I mean, diving, hustling. I'll tell you one thing about Illinois. They better beat him now. Frankie Williams gets eligible next year for Peoria. They get the kid Griffin in out of junior college. Cook a high school sensation. They can make the elevation to the big time and a big spot in that Big Ten quickly. Carson Cunningham leading Purdue back within two. Back in Bloomington, Dave Barnett, Dick Vitale, Indiana by two. Where would Purdue be without the sophomore transfer from Ogden Dunes, Indiana? Carson Cunningham. Well, he loves playing in the state of Indiana. We watch Cunningham right here. He's giving him such a spark. There he is knocking down the three. He's six for seven. But he's made some big shots. Whenever Indiana's tried to get away from him, he's made some big, big plays. And I'll tell you, they... You talk about the Big Ten. Since 1989, seven different Big Ten schools have earned a number one seed, showing you how it's so diversified in the league. I mean, Minnesota, Michigan State, Purdue, Indiana, Ohio State, Illinois, and Michigan all have had number one seeds since 1989.
That is remarkable just in the last 10 years. Can they get eight this year? I think they can. I think there's an outside shot that it can happen, except these clubs are beating each other. Might eliminate either Iowa or Purdue. Might knock themselves out. Northwestern is hanging in the air. They got a big game tomorrow with Wisconsin, but it's at Wisconsin. Good Five defense. Five on the shot clock. Haston, a big look. You know, really hurts right here. Gene Candy's kid did a solid job defensively, and then Hasty gets good post position and drops down the jump hook. Six of his ten here in the second half. He started the second half and has made Bob Knight's decision look like a good one. That one off the head of McQuay out of bounds touch last by Hasty. Purdue's going to have to really come up and find a way to contain Indiana a little bit better defensively if they're going to scrap and claw and come from behind and win this game. They just cannot rely on the offensive end. Out again off Hasty. Now you mentioned before about seven teams. For sure, I think this year maybe eight. Last year, only five was the highest to get in. Five conferences got five in a 98. 97, two conferences got six, the Big Ten and the ACC. If it's eight, Northwestern then would make its first ever trip I, to the NCAA. I hope that happens for Evan Eschmeyer, Kevin O'Neill, and all those kids. I hope they get into the big dance. Great for Chicago. Jerron Cornell still missing in action. The Boilers scoring leader stuck at three on one of six shooting. Rob Turner can't get the roll. But you know what? A shooter's got to continue to shoot. He has not had good looks. What a great pass. What a great pass. Great look. Hartnell does a superb job of running the transition. Indiana gets a poor grade in terms of getting back defensively. Cornell and Mayfield get back. I'm going to call the reach on Jerron his second. You're going to watch Cardinal right now. Run out now. Right here. Freeze it. Right here. See how he sneaks ahead? This defensive guy's got to be aware of him. Not aware of him. He sneaks ahead. They throw it a bounce pass. Too late in the recovery by Lewis. And there's the layup. They don't have much from Cornell, but they do have balance tonight. Cardinal, 15 points, 13 each for Greg McQuay and Carson Cunningham. I tell you, they showed so much guts and heart earlier this year. They went down 18 in the second half against St. John's and came back and won a miracle three by Jerron Cornell. Michael Lewis leans in on Cunningham. Connects. What a big time score in high school, but he's adjusted to the role of the quarterback. Has really improved his basketball IQ and his decision making process. Lewis's first field goal, third point. Hoosiers, four point lead. We're halfway gone in the second half. I think Lewis is too unselfish. I think he's got a thing shot a little more. He's got a nice stroke. He's hitting 55%. That's the best I know. field goal percentage on the roster. Good, good effort right now by Indiana defensively. Really playing the ball tough. Ace and shoot. See a ball, man. Eldridge for Greg McQuay. Short record of ball. Created by dribble penetration again. That usually gets you a good shot. Aston rewarded by Wrecker for running the floor and knocked out of bounds. It's nice to see the big guys get out in transition. Elton Brand has done a superb job for Duke in getting out of the break. First half, McQuay was... Huge. 13 points, mostly on slam ducks. Scoreless, 0 for 4, second half. Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Dave Barnett and Dick Vitale watching a big second half performance by Kirk Houston for Indiana. The redshirt freshman has been almost unstoppable, getting a second half start for Bob Knight. Hasty really earning some playing time. Now watch right here. He gets the shot rejected at him, but the great second effort. He doesn't get humiliated. He comes back, and he kisses it off the glass and gets the conversion. What an unbelievable performance by him here in that second half. He's getting good post position. What a steal by Wrecker. Wrecker steals, missed the reverse. Wow, but that brought the house down. I like the backflip he did on the floor after the miss. They got to get some looks for Cornell. They got to get some looks for him. Stevens looks for Cornell and rewarded Gerard Cornell for getting open on the back cut. Five points, all they've got from their scoring leader. Ten below his average. Purdue hanging close. Spin move, Guyton. Baseline was surrounded. Gladness for Haston. Missed the layup. No call. Outlet almost stolen again by record. Now Cunningham, who 
who has shot Purdue back from nine down in the second half. What a big time performance. They're not going away, baby. Stay tuned. We got a great one here in Bloomington, Indiana. What a rivalry. Purdue and Indiana. Well, Jasper's watching. He's seen 70 of these. He's 90 years of age. Played here. One of the oldest living Hoosiers. Supreme Court judge in Indiana for years. Eldridge called for the foul here. Here's a look at Cunningham. Two more of his 15 most here in the second half. Look at that spread eagle on his jump shot. The way he kicks out his legs. The bottom line is there's only one thing that Gene Getty loves. The way it goes down. I love that Kuka. I had yeah. that back in 58 when I graduated high school. It's in my yearbook on East Grotter for New Jersey. You don't believe me. I had a nice little Kuka. Now you've got the permanent Kuka. <laughs> Thanks. I got the permanent Kuka. <laughs> You're right about that, my ball dome. The guy, they contained him here. They contained him so far. Made a mistake that time. Left him alone, and he doesn't hit the three-pointer. So here's Purdue looking to tie or lead. I got to show patience. Eldridge tied at 63. Good patience right there because that's a high percentage shot right inside the foul line. Look at Jim Kenny pointing to the ground. He said, we got to get down, baby. We got to get down and get dirty and play some D. Oh, this is great. What a place to be tonight. There's no place else I'd rather be. No looker for Haston who gets the roll. 10 in the half, 14 of the game for Kirk Haston. You got to have inside presence when you want to win big games. You can't rely strictly perimeter. And right now, Haston is providing that on the interior. Oh, this place is alive. Oh, is it alive? It's Purdue and Indiana, and they don't like each other. <laughs> Cunningham going to a left hand that time. Long rebound out to Cornell. They reset inside for Cameron Stevens. Foul by Hastings. Nice entry inside, and Stevens does a good job taking it up. But he could have converted that if he went up with just a little bit more authority. They reverse the ball now right here. Freeze it. See right here. Now look at this wide open. They dump it down inside. He's got to go right to the goal, but he's a little slow and tentative. Defense rotates down, hesitates, takes it up. Doesn't really go up with authority, but did get fouled, and that goes to the line. Which has not been good news for Cameron Stevens this year. 48% free throw shooter, 0 for 1 tonight. It's a nice rotation right there. I love the Purdue team that he had back in, I guess it was 88, when he had all those kids in terms of Lewis. Remember that gang? They were really outstanding. Mitchell and Lewis and company. I really love that team. Stevens, that was the year they got beat by Mitch Richmond, put a show on against yep. them and shocked them. And Danny and Manning and all those kids went on to win the national title. Stevens hits both. Our seventh tie with 7.06 to play. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one thing. You look at Michigan. You talk about a Dow Joneser man going up and down. They scored 34 points and got blitzed 58-34 by uh, Northwestern, Evan Eschmeyer and company. And then they come back and they play brilliantly. I believe it was Minnesota. Didn't they play brilliantly against Minnesota? And now here it is. They're challenging Ohio State on the road. Lewis Bullock. I'll tell you, he would have been even much better had Robert Tractor Trailer stayed in, stayed in school, and he should have stayed in school. He would have had a big All-American year this year. Indiana, another Wolverine victim, ran away from them at Ann Arbor. Hoosiers led this by as many as nine in this second half. McQuay rising to reject Haston with nine remaining on the shot clock. Well, McQuay did a great job rotating over because it's been all hasty on the inside here in the second half. He's dominated on the interior. Now they got Cardinal playing him, so they get a little physical with him. Well, this five, four, shot clock, Guyton, three-pointer long. Madness outbattled by Cardinal. Indiana has missed six shots in a row, and Purdue can get its first lead since six and a half minutes remained in the first half. Well, they're trying to run some curls and some screens. There's the high-low. Cardinal, another layup. Purdue on top. It's absolutely A-plus execution. A nice curl move. That's Purdue basketball. That's Gene Candy basketball. That's the kind of basketball that wins games for you. Good execution, ball movement, and player movement. Oilers on a 21 to 10 run, seven straight have misfired for Indiana as Wrecker missed it. All this with very little offense from Jerron Cornell, Cunningham, Cardinal, and McQuay.
stepping up in the absence of Cornell's usual production. They're starting to make more passes now, making an extra pass, trying to start to utilize the screen a lot better. Rounded on the baseline, so Cornell finds Greg McQuay, his first points of the half 15 for the game. I'll tell you, the offensive efficiency has really been outstanding by Purdue here in the last five minutes. They have really had good movement, good execution, and most of all, excellent screening. What a second half by Purdue. A 23 to 10 run to forge a four point lead just under five and a half minutes. Well, Dave, they had a little curl move and then they had that high low. We're going to see it right here. Freeze it right here. See it right now? Now watch the post position on the inside. And they're going to dump it right to Cardinal and he's going to get himself a layup on the inside. McQuay. Cardinal does an excellent job holding off right into our camera. Kisses it on the glass and gets the conversion. Two of his 17, Indiana started so hot, especially from three, not anymore. They have done a great job containing A.J. Guyton in the second half. Look at him running at him. They're going to double him, play right in his face. They're going to make him try to drive instead of get the good look. So that would attack him, too. You can't give him that good look. Inside, it's a strip by Cardinal. He can't keep it in bounds. Gladness really struggling on the inside, scoring. What a story, as I said earlier. He's playing with a bullet on the side, a hill of bullets, and him and his friend lost his brother this year who was shot down in West Memphis, and also the passing of his dad. It's been a tough year for William Gladness. What a shot by Record, who has 15. That ends the Purdue run. The lead is two, under five minutes. It's mailbox time, baby. Get out the mailbox. It's going to be a mailbox masher to the finish. Cornell, they got to lay a screen for Cornell. See, I think he's the kind of guy that all of a sudden could knock down the three for you. He's been quiet. And there he is. Picked up by Lewis. Ten to shoot for Cunningham. Lewis has done an excellent job on Cornell. Shadowing him all over. Cunningham charging. Oh, the basket. They get the charge. What a big possession there. Oh, what a big they want the basket. They want the basket. Ruckus says, no goal, no goal. Look at the pain, the frustration on Gene Candy's face. Here goes Cunningham. Let's see the charge. Oh, I don't know about that charge. Rucker, is he there quick enough? I don't know about that, but he got it. That's all that counts. And look at him. He's the cheerleader as well. I don't know if he got there quick enough, but I'm not making that call. Record to Haston. World hits another hook shot. He's making like a rebound. Lang utilizes that well in North Carolina. And look at Rutgers. I love players that play with emotion. He is pumping up this crowd. We are tied. It's four minutes and 13. One team, five and five, Indiana. Four and six, Purdue. What will give? McQuay again finds Cardinal itself. Hey, Dave, what basketball execution. Cardinal with that good post move on the interior. A season high for Brian Cardinal, 19 points. Whirlers back on top. Wrecker. This game's going to come down to whoever locks it up on a defensive end. Lewis. Oh, they want the goal What a goal tender. They didn't get the two anyway. Haston, 18 points for Kirk Haston. Wow, I thought there was goal tending there, baby. But Haston really playing superbly on the inside. Timeout by Gene Cady. We're tied. Oh, if you're Purdue, you don't want to leave here four and seven. And if you're Indiana, you don't want anybody to come into the general's house and beat you. I thought we had goaltending down there, Dave. What do you say? You got two eyes. I got one. Well, tough to tell. Tough to tell. Close enough, maybe, to, to give the block to McQuinn. And there's Hastings on the glass. Well, I'll concede to you because you got two and I got one. Bob Knight quickly sat down as uh, Haston laid in two of the 14 second half points he has scored. Here, one more look. This may be a little easier to tell. Here's Michael Lewis with the shot. That's, Ooh, that is a probably yes, better angle to say yes, goal sir. Tender. I thought it was goaltending, but we got the luxury of a second look, and we got the luxury of the monitor, which the officials do not have. They've done a heck of a job here tonight. Rucker, Hightower, and Hillary in a very tough, tough game to call. And he's going to get it back and score. Gladness follows him up. The Hastings deflection in the denial made that happen. Good denial defense. Oh, it's rocking and rolling here in Bloomington. John Cougar Mellencamp ready to do some dancing. He's the only 
guy here used to this kind of volume. Now Cornell may get on track. Seven for Cornell, 73 all. What I like about Cornell, he's not looking to force shots. He's taking a shot within the offense, and it was there, and he knocked it down. Good horizontal screening going on by Indiana. Those screens across the lane. Aston, the man for them in the second half. Guyton scored their first six points of the half, 0 for 4 since. Lewis almost stripped by Cunningham. Great job keeping the dribble alive. Yeah, he really did. Lay it on his feet. Now Guyton, shot clock winding down. Spins, lost control for Dubois. He forced that shot. He was trying to create something that wasn't there in the first half. He was taking really high percentage, good shots for him. We're down to two minutes, partner. We got ourselves a barn burner. We got a barn burner, typical Purdue, Indiana. I'll be talking about this in work tomorrow. Their last regular season meeting of the century. And many of these people work together, Purdue and Indiana fans, here in the state of Indiana. Well, and since 1901, they're 175th, one of the best of that lengthy list. Showed a lot of poise so offensively. Oh, there's a bad shot, but it goes. Shot you want that offensive sequence. You showed poise, took some time off the clock. Managing the clock now is big. Shot selection is big. Hasten, can he stay hot? No. Cunningham with a minute and a half. Tied at 73. Gene Lutz in the back it out. Eldridge running the points. Got a lot of play in time. Sutton played well there and got a chance to come back home. Shot clock at seven. There's a high screen. Cardinal tough shot. In oh! The oh, that was close. What a tough one. That baby hanging up there. Use the ball screen. Here we go, partner. Time 51 ticks on the clock. 73 73. And Purdue, if they don't pull this out, they may be haunted by the last couple of shots. Both in and out. Both looked in. One by Eldridge, this one by Cunningham. Look at this shot right here. Cunningham with the top shot. Throws it up off the glass. It hangs and hangs and hangs. How close you are to victory or defeat. Almost a little interference right there by Gladness. Somebody with the net. Timeouts. Two more timeouts for Purdue. Indiana has three. Bonus in effect. Next foul both ways. Purdue the possession arrow. We have our ninth tie. We've had a dozen lead changes. Indiana had it by nine. 55-46. Cunningham led the Boilermakers to a 23-10 run. They led by four. Now the Hoosiers have forged the tie with 51.1. Hastings and Cardinal. Cardinal's got to lock up on Hastings. The problem is whenever he's screened, he's been able to get inside. So he'll give him inside presence. Guyton and Cornell hooked up, trying to run some curl moves with Guyton. Guyton likes the big shot. Won the game against Temple. Won the game against Penn State at the end. Here's Wrecker. Side cleared. Isolation. Eldridge. Yeah, through isolation. Lewis driving back. chance to run this baby out, take the shot and go to OT. They can either win it or go to OT. If you're going to shoot it, you want to give yourself a chance for the offensive rebound. Remember this, the most dangerous guy is the guy on the offside, Eldridge. Five seconds. He'll hit it it is, it if he can. No. Rebound at the buzzer and we're headed to OT. And we're for the overtime in Bloomington in a moment. But they beat Notre Dame and Penn State in OT. We do getting their first taste. That was not the shot they would have liked in the OT in the last possession. Really didn't get the ball inside at all, had a chance. Eldridge took a shot. I'm sure Gene Kane wishes they did, but right now they're gonna lock it up for five minutes. 20 seconds and never really looked inside for that last shot, but they do here, and it's Cornell hitting a tough one in traffic. That was a tough shot, taking the ball to the basket. Normally a three-point shooter, very quiet. But the last two shots he has taken have been really good.
Six solid shots, drives to the goal. Good defense inside, but Rector gets a second chance and score. Luke Rector, not a good offensive rebound, was not even averaging one offensive rebound a game. Gets the second shot. In fact, Bobby Knight wishes the kid was a little bit more aggressive on, a, on the offensive boards. Now Cardinal and Gladness are tangled up, and William Gladness is hit with his fourth foul. He's the only player on either team really in much foul trouble. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Getting demonstrative. Got to be careful of a technical. You don't want to lose your cool here in this time of the game. There's the inside. Gladness gets called. I mean, there's a lot of contact. You can call it either way. Great story with Gladness. Going to graduate as a kid hanging around. Did even graduate high school. Went to junior college and made himself a student and will get out with a degree here at Indiana. Great story. Ryan Cardinal, 7 for 7 free throws. 79% to the year. Good job offensively. He struggled though defensively. Did not play really well on the inside. Hasty really dominated him on the interior. But he's done a solid job offensively. Ryan Cardinal's best game of the year. 21 points. Cameron Stevenson to replace Greg McQuay with Purdue leading by two. Yeah, but I could hear Katie saying, yeah, you guys talk about best game. But well, let me show you film and show you what Hasty did to him. So he balanced that 21 out. All right, best offense you gave him. Yeah, you. right. Nice girl move. See, right now, Cardinal's got to deny the ball to Hasty, but Hasty becomes effective laying those screens. Oh, he's got to be uh -oh. careful. Tom Rucker is going to be ready to tee him up. He's got to be very careful on that sideline. I mean, Tom Rucker had the whistle, was ready. taking a big, giant step toward Bob Knight. His hands were moving toward the team position, and he held up just a little bit. Bobby Knight walked down the other side. Made that good move rather than coming back, because a tee there would have been disaster. He knows what's at stake here. Five and five in the conference. Alan Eldridge commits his third. Wrecker misses the front end. Got to convert those free throws. They go on a road to Northwestern after this game, Indiana. See, now you got to get ball moving. Some screens, execute their passing game, screen away, make a high percentage shot. Cardinal trying to post inside. Ah, oh, not a good look. They're going to get bailed out here. No, they're going to call Cardinal for a push. I thought they were going to foul Gladness out on a bad pass. Instead, Cardinal with his first foul. Dave, that was a really good call as well. You watch Cardinal right here, people. Watch him down here. See, he's going to push off, but he can't get the ball. He spots it. And he's a who me? Who me? He knows he pushed off there. <laughs> So William Gladness in another one and one in Indiana. Only six of 13 at the free throw line, and they would have put this one away in regulation. And that's normally not the way they shoot free throws over the years. This year, not shooting as well as they've done in the past. 67% this year, and they have missed their last five at the line. Wow, does that hurt? Here at OT, Wrecker and Gladness come up empty. Now Purdue can really make a pay for that. Yeah, in fact, does not have a made free throw since the first half. Purdue with the turnover by Eldridge, though. What a sloppy play right there by Purdue. Uh -oh. All right, he can uh -oh. again, though. Follows his own list for two. Nobody blocking out. We saw a record with an offensive rebound. And there was A.J. Guyton. He just floats right to the globe. Nobody blocks him out. Three minutes in overtime. Jerron Cornell's the guy out go to lay some big time screens for Cornell. They'll switch it on him, but he had a backdoor cut. They missed him. Every time he steps out off the screen, they switch. Now Guyton picks him up. Cornell picks up right at the key and hits again. That's the guy I'd go to. I would go to Mr. Cornell. He made the big one to beat St. John's. This kid wants the ball at the end of the game, and he's been taking good shots, not bad shots. Four of their six in overtime. Oilers by two, under two and a half. Back cut, Wrecker ties it again. Wide open. I'll tell you one thing, both clubs burning each other with back cuts tonight here in this game. Simple execution, lack of defensive presence to see ball and man. 
See, Cornell now has got to run Lewis into a screen. There's the back screen for him. And they switched on him. He wants the down screen from Cardinal. Pops out. They missed him. You got to spot that open guy and get the ball at the right time. Stevens calls for double team. Almost hits anywhere. That was an impossible angle. That was an absolute impossible angle to make that shot. And he almost did, but it's in the Adams chance now to break a tie. A minute 40 in OT. Michael Lewis looks low, instead goes high for Guyton. Double clutch in the lane, it's halfway down and up. I'll tell you, what a big game, people, for both these clubs. Entertaining thoughts that want that big berth to the NCAA. Five and five. Should have played better out. Cunningham, on the other hand, has been huge, and that one off the top of the backboard angles it. He has 17 points, and Purdue back in front as we near one minute to go in overtime. You know how special that is to a kid that wasn't recruited and always wanted to play at these schools. Wrecker answers. Nobody guarded him, though, Dave. Right open in the medium range, jump shot. But Cunningham had told me how you always, you always wanted to play here at Indiana. Nobody wanted him. He went out to Oregon State. He gave it all back to that rookie, and here he is with the rock in his hands, and the score died. Here's the dream as a kid doing this. Almost travel. Real close. It's Eldridge, 38 seconds. 15 on the shot clock. Cornell breaks open a three-point. Oh, there's the guy, Mr. Clutch. But Indiana's got a shot. Plenty of time left. They down three. Seven for Cornell at the end of regulation. He has seven in the overtime. Got to play good perimeter three defense now. You got to lock up. Don't let Guyton get that good look at the three. They're really stepping out on him. Lewis. Not quite rebound, Cornell. 12 seconds to go. And now they have to foul Allen Eldridge with 10.6 seconds to go. But Allen can lock this up, make a free throw here, and it's really going to be tough. It'll be a two possession game. Boy, the faces of the Hoosiers registering total frustration. Well, you know, get they, away. they dominated the game. Absolutely dominated. You look at. Robert Knight's son, Patrick, Patrick Knight, assistant coach now. Dad really singing his praises today. This is certainly big right here. Ball game, ball game, unless a miracle happens. A lot of time with 10.6, but four is going to be tough to overcome unless you really play unintelligent basketball. This could be a jubilant ride back to West Lafayette for Gene Candy's kids. It has not been a great game for Alan Eldridge, but oh, those are the two that Lewis in and out on a prayer. Down to two seconds, Cardinal steals it, Purdue wins it. They avoid the sweep, and they win on Bob Knight's home floor, 86-81 in overtime. I'll tell you, we could have eight teams out of the Big Ten. This makes it a little closer. But they won. I love it. Woo! Woo! Good, good. Kenny. It was a great team ever. Whoever it was sitting there, great screen. I came off the screen, and to my surprise, I was wide open. And I wasn't missing that shot. I was listening to my main man, Carlito Labarda, and he told me to uh, stand on my shot, and I did. Bottom of the net, baby, and a victory. This victory came straight from the gut, you know what I'm saying? You know, we prepared ourselves all week for this battle, you know what I'm saying? We came out here, did what we were supposed to do, and we came out with a W, you know what I'm saying? Um, our bench really played great tonight, and uh, I mean, when our, when, our, when our bench plays great, we're a, we're a great ball club. Congratulations, fellas. Ain't no sweet, y'all. Where are we going next? I don't come any sweet. I'm very good. 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 I'm very